Okay, I think we're just about ready. So if you're just joining this room for the afternoon session, um, we're uh, welcoming all our speakers to the stage with a standing ovation for, being, uh, for taking part in this awesome conference. Um, so if you would please be upstanding and give a big round of applause to Sebastian Thomas. Yeah, one, two. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we're here to talk about limits and throttling. So uh, we'll try to make that interactive. So who knows what limits are in a Kubernetes or a container? Okay, few of you. Who knows what is throttling about limits and resources? Not much, not sure. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm Sebastian, uh, usually called Prune on Slack and whatnot on GitHub. Uh, I'm uh, co-organizer of uh, Kubernetes, CNCF Kubernetes and Canada meetups in Quebec, sometimes it's Montreal. Uh, I'm new cohort from the CNCF ambassador. I'm a contributor to OSF, OS, open source software. Uh, so the agenda, again, what are requests, what are limits, uh, what that means for Kubernetes, uh, do I have an issue with my HPA because of that? Um, so for the one who knows, it's like when you deploy something, like a deployment a stateful set, whatnot, uh, you can uh, actually, it's not in the deployment itself, it's in the pod, it's in the container section. Uh, you can define requests, so what my pod wants, and limits what my pod can use, or my container can use, actually. Uh, so. We're not going to talk about requests first, but that, that's totally it. And there's a, a catch I want you to know. Uh, request, it's to, usually you think of a request like, okay, my pod needs 100 meg of memory to start, or two CPU to start, because I know I need that full time. Um, and you're just thinking that's what, what you need. Actually, uh, what you request uh, from the system level is guaranteed. So if you request, like, I want two CPUs, you're going to get two CPUs, whatever happened. If you need them, you're going to get them. Uh, so um, that's one of the conclusions, but like, I I'm giving you that straight. Uh, be very mindful with the request, because like, it's a guarantee. Uh, you have it, so it's not just for starting the container. And then you have limits, uh, limits or quotas uh, in the Linux kernel. Uh, it's what the, the, the container can use. So for memory, it's very easy. Memory, if you use more than that, you're going to be killed. Uh, because the system thinks you're getting crazy, using too much, and you're out. For a CPU, if you use more than that, you're going to be throttled. And that's the content of this talk today. Um, so this is a little bit nerdy, but everything that uh, is tied to limits and requests actually goes down to the kernel and to C groups and how you configure that. So it's a way to tell the kernel, the kernel uh, what to do and what to give to the pod compared to what exists in the system. So this is very nerdy. You don't have to know that and you will probably never go down to the system and look at that, but it's actually tied down very close to the kernel. So how will it all working? So that's the fundamental. Um, so you think your, your pod is going to use like, uh, uh, let's say two CPU. So you say, okay, limits two CPU because my pod is very CPU intensive, I need two. Um, so what, hap is, are, what is happening in the system is you're not going to get two CPUs uh, straight away reserved for you and whatnot. In the kernel, the CPU time is split in 100 millisecond sections. Uh, and when you define a request or a limit, or actually not a request, but a limit, you get some part of some time during this section. Uh, so here you have the quota, like if you use one CPU, you get the usage of one CPU during one period. Or you can also get like two CPUs, but half a period. Uh, or if you use two CPUs, well, you can have like two CPUs for one period. Or I get you understand uh, now. If you set like half a CPU, well, you get half a CPU, and that's exactly it, what you get. But again, it's tied to 100 millisecond period. Uh, so 
these are like just examples. Uh, your container is working for 200 milliseconds. You have two threads. Uh, you give it two CPUs. So yeah, it can work like your two threads are going to work uh, concurrently during 100 milliseconds. Uh, that's what you're going to get. So actually, if, if the, the load is, is steady, you're going to get actually running here and here and here and here and all the time because you're consuming two CPUs fully, uh, one, one thread on each CPU. Uh, or maybe you're not consuming all that and then your two threads are um, one after the other. Or if you say, um, like my container, my limit is one CPU. What you should be using is actually you're going, the first thread is going to use the first period and the second thread is going to use the second period. Okay, so now your workload, if, you, if you're working for 200 milliseconds, but only on one CPU, the work of your application is going to be done in 200 milliseconds, okay? So by setting this limit to low, you're actually forcing the application to take longer to execute. Uh, this is just like a demonstration of the thing. So again, if you set the limit to half a CPU, then you're going to have half a period. So you're going to have use half the period, and then you have to wait for the next. And half a period, you wait half a period, and you wait. So actually, if you set the limit too low, your application is going to take 400 milliseconds to execute. So now your application is impacted. It's working slower than it could because you set the limit too low. And that's what we call throttling. Because your application doesn't know about this periods and whatnot. Your application wants CPU. Your application is saying, hey, I need CPU to compute something. Uh, and so the application doesn't know about that, but the system does. And the system is going to schedule you on one CPU for a period. And then once the, per once the time you had on the CPU is used, it's going to say, well, stop. You can't work anymore. You don't have any CPU anymore. Then you're going to wait. So throttling is actually wait time for the CPU. Uh, and it can go like way worse than that. Let's say, oh, I have two CPUs. Okay, but if you set the limit very, very, very low, like 200 milliseconds, uh, 200 milli CPU, uh, that means like, let's say 20% of a period, uh, but you're using two cores. So actually you may use 20, you may use, um, 20 milliseconds on one CPU, but if you use two, you will, be only able to use like 10%, 10 milliseconds of a CPU plus 10 milliseconds of the CPU, that's 20 milliseconds of CPU, and that's all your quota you have. So then you wait. So now your application, still same application, is 500 milliseconds, half a second to execute the exact same amount of work uh, just because you set the limit too low. Uh, that's a recap, but I get, you, you guessed that. Um, so. Pushing the limit. So the, the idea is, if you want to set limits, you need to know your workload. You need to understand how your application is working. So generally speaking, uh, I, I came out at the beginning with three kind of application, and finally I said, oh, okay, this one is irrelevant. It, you have two. You have the CPU intensive one, like you're running a batch. So your batch have a lot of data to compute, and it's going to work full CPU until the job is done, and then stop. And then you have the burst model, where let's say a web server, like if you don't have any request, web server is doing nothing. And then you get a request, you have to process that, compute something, generate the web page, send that back, and, and you're done. So that's kind of burst. Uh, and, and most of your applications are actually CPU burst. And we could actually put the CPU intensive inside a burst, but the burst is, is long enough. Uh, so that's two kind of, uh, of application. So in, in real life, what's happening is that your application is using some of the CPU and then a lot of CPU because most of the applications are multi-threaded and you usually don't have any control of that number of threads and, and how many are used at the same time. Uh, so usually it looks like that, okay? So it's kind of unpredictable and, and you don't know about it because when you do observability, you may, uh, grab the, the CPU usage of your application every 30 seconds, one minute, or something like that. So you don't see this spike. What you see is a mean value here, somewhere in the middle. So you think, oh, my application is using one CPU. So I will set limit one CPU. But your application is actually not using one CPU. It's using like five CPU here, six here, uh, for, for this time period. And, the, and then one, and 
probably zero at some point. So uh, you're actually, you actually don't know how your application is really behaving, behaving, and that is pushing you to set the wrong limit value for it. Uh, and you end up with that. This is one of my clusters. Uh, ops namespace and kube system namespace. So it's only things I manage as a platform DevOps engineer. And you see 20% throttling for the, the, this terminated pod garbage collector, 15% for the stack driver exporter. So I'm doing my, I'm badly doing my work actually because of that. So um, I build a small Go application. I'm not a very great Go developer. This is totally, mm -hmm -hmm. you understand. Uh, it's an application that have two periods. One period where it's going to consume some CPU and one period where it's going to consume, let's say, less CPU, the wait period. So that is supposed to mimic some kind of batch application where you process a batch and then you're done and then you process another batch. Uh, and it, the goal here is just to confirm uh, how the limits are working uh, in a repeatable way, reproducible way. So this is what it is like. It's so because of the latencies on, on the on the metrology on the scraping, uh, it should be a straight line here. It should go from uh, like uh, uh, like 100 milli CPU to a full CPU. It should be straight, but because of latencies and mean values and whatnot, so the, the form is not ready. Who thinks this application is behaving normally? Who thinks this application is working fine? Who thinks there is a problem with this application? Yeah, you guess it. Of course, there is a problem. That's too obvious. Okay. Now, if you see this graph for the same application, again, for the previous graph was CPU usage, okay? This one is CPU usage versus the throttling person and its array. Do you think there is a problem here when you see that? Who thinks there is a problem here? One, two, three, four, a few, okay. Who thinks it's totally okay because it's the same graph as we had before for the CPU? Well, this is a very big problem because as long as the throttling is above zero percent, that means it's happening. That means you're going prevented to use the CPU. A hundred percent throttling means your application is actually needs twice as much CPU as you're getting. So that's a very big problem. Um, so that's it, that's the application I deployed. So the CPU we saw before, the throttling person, that means when the application is working and using one CPU, I have almost 100 person throttling here. And my application is actually performing three million operation per second, maybe 3.2, let's say something like that. And this application was deployed, so it's working for five minutes, and then it's uh, with a certain amount of CPU, and then it's waiting and using 100 milli CPU, okay? Uh, and the CPU limit is one, because my application is using one at max, so why not set limit to one? I'm not going above the limit, but still I have throttling happening. Why, what's happening? So, well, I guess, like maybe let's try to increase the CPU limit, like 1.5. So now my limit is way above my usage. And when I look at the graphs, oh, I'm still using to the limit. Like I'm using 1.5 CPU now, and I'm still having throttling. But because I gave more CPU, I'm using more CPU. Now I'm, using, I'm doing like 4.5 million operation per second. That's better, but like, if it's working better with 1.5 CPU limit, why not increase that even more? And increasing even more is why not like not set a limit at all? And what happens when you don't set a limit? Well, the CPU will give you whatever you request. Well, not you request, not, not, not the request you put in the YAML, but whatever the application needs. So the application like so applications you deploy in the system, they are always trying to get CPU to work on, okay? They are asking the kernel, like, give me CPU, give me CPU. So this one is very hungry for the CPU. And actually, when I remove the limits, I have no throttling because no limits, no throttling. And then my application is using almost three CPUs here. 
and is now performing 8 million operations per second, twice as much than with 1.5 CPU limit. Uh, so the demonstration here is if you think that, okay, I have to deploy this application, I'm going to set a request based on your, your, your mood at the moment, and then I'm going to set a limit because, well, you have to set a limit. You shouldn't never deploy uh, an application, a container, without setting a limit because you're going to impact others' application in the system. Then you set a limit, you set it wrong, and your application is behaving poorly, and you absolutely don't know about it. Um, so, actually, work CPU was set to three since the beginning. Um, so it was hidden because, like, at, at first, we do, we, this application is very strange because I say, I want to use three CPU, it's using three CPU. But that's not how your usual application behave. Usually, your application like, will depend on, on the workload, the content of the batch. You don't know exactly how many CPU it's going to use. So that's why setting limits at first, when you don't know the application, the workload, the behavior, uh, is kind of totally crazy. Uh -huh. So um, if I set CPU limit to three, then it's getting better. So then we have the without limit, and then we set CPU limit to three. And what's happening is we're almost using the three CPUs that uh, the application needs. And we have a little throttling, not much, just a little. But we're still using less CPU than, than the three of the limit, and still we can see some of the throttling here. And Hopefully, uh, on the number of, re of uh, operation per second, it doesn't move. It, actually, I'm pretty sure it moved a little bit down, but because that's very tricky to, to, to measure, um, it, it feels it's okay. So let's say it's okay. I, I want three CPU. I set the limit to three to CPU. Everything is okay. Um, so um, the, the the throttling is still, on this previous one, the throttling is still happening because, again, the application is not using three CPUs straight all the time. The application is using like four CPU at some point and, and then a little bit less. So it's actually more bumpy than that. So these bumps, they generate a little bit of throttling. So they are a little bit impacted, but at least you're using the three CPU uh, that you think you need. Um, okay. so. I introduced another variable in here. Uh, I said this because sometimes you want to cap your application uh, and you want to get the control exactly on what's happening. So this is more a testing, but I set CPU limit to one. So my application should be using one CPU. But I set the GoMax proc to one. GoMax proc is a Go variable that um, is a kind of a tuning of how the Go, um, how Go will, the, the, the runtime of the application will generate threads or use the CPU. Um, so it depends on some libraries you're using that are going to spin more or less threads depending on that value. Usually by default, the GoMax proc equals the number of CPU on the node or the machine running, on the computer running uh, the application. Um, and, and that can be a problem because when your application is running as a container in Kubernetes, Go so far doesn't know about what you set as a request or a limit in the container. It only knows about what's on the system. So if you have a 32 core or 32 CPU host and you start your Go application, your application will think that it has 32 CPU to run, which is totally way like, bigger than what you actually gave it because you set your limit to one. Um, so in this circumstance, because I matched the two here, uh, of course I'm going to use one CPU, not more, because I set it to one. But yeah, of course I will have some throttling, um, but actually less throttling because less thr we're not 100% throttling as we were before. Um, and we're actually still making six point something million operation per second. And still we're using just one CPU. If we go back here, uh, we were using one CPU, but only three and something, three and a half million application per second. So that's far better. Uh, and actually, this is all due of the goal tuning, which is going to spin less threads uh, and are going to use uh, and um, schedule the routine in the threads differently a little bit to, to better use the CPU. Uh, so that's what we're seeing here. Before that, we had three 
root, uh, so three routine from the application. Because I said my application, I want you to use three CPU. It's starting three routine, each one consuming one CPU. But if we look at the threads, we had maybe like 12 here, and we're down to six. So we cut almost half of the thread. So that's less things moving from one CPU to the other, and you get better performance because of that. Uh, and it goes like that. So now I have, like, I'm still saying use three CPU, but GoMax proc is one. And I said CPU limit two. So actually what's happening, because I set my GoMax proc to one, actually Go will change the way it schedule things. Only one routine will be running at a time. So we're actually using exactly one CPU. And, we have, and now we have no throttling because we set CPU limit two, which is way above the usage. And we lower it down to say, use only one routine. Uh, and we are still doing like six point something million uh, operation per second. So we kind of tune the application and the limits to make the system work at its best. So it's totally some kind of tuning. And there's different ways of doing that with Java, for example. The latest JVM, they know exactly how to fetch the number of CPUs um, from a container run, from a container actually. So it kind of auto tune. And there's, um, uh, there's um, packages like the, I think it's Uber uh, auto prox or something like that. That can, it's just a package you in instantiate in your Go code and it's going to grab the number of CPU from the container. It's going to compute that for you. Um, and, 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 and finally, uh, I said like go max proc one and I unset the limits. And what you see here is I'm still using one CPU and I have no throttling because no limit. And I'm doing six point something million operation per second. So I have the full power of the application with one thread running even if I'm requesting for three CPU. Uh, so the, the conclusion here, the first conclusion is you don't need limits uh, at first. So try to run your application without limits even on production like, or do canary. Have one with the limits, one without and try to understand exactly the pattern, the CPU usage of your application. Um, so, and if you can, don't set limits. And this is very controversial. Um, but set the request right. Because request, again, is guaranteed. So if you request, let's say, one CPU, and your application used two, no problem, you, you still can, um, okay? Uh, if your application use one CPU most of the time, but sometimes two, set two as a request, okay? The, the drawback of that is you're going to lose, when you're only using one CPU but re you requested two, you're going to lose one CPU that is not you. It feels it's not used. And Kubernetes doesn't over provision on CPU. So if you set your application, like we have 10 application, one CPU or two CPU each, and you're up to the maximum number of CPU that's on the node, Kubernetes is not going to schedule new pods on the node. So Actually, you requested something you don't use, but nobody else can use. Um, but if one of the workload on the node is using more than the two CPU you, requ you requested, let's say three or four, there's room for it, okay? And if the, usually people are afraid of noisy neighbor. So one application going crazy, taking all the CPU on the node. And if you don't set limit, your application is going to be constrained and, and don't have any CPU because you set the limit too high for others and they're using it all. That's wrong. Stop thinking like that. If your application requested two CPU, it's guaranteed. If it's not used, it's going to be given to another application that uses more. But if your application starts working and needs the two CPU, it's going to get it. And the other one is going to be throttled to accommodate the one who, who needs the two CPU. So that's how it's working in NIF, and that's why uh, you shouldn't set limits. But be careful, if, when you don't set limits, uh, if you don't set limits, uh, what may happen is you're going to consume more than your request, and you don't have limits, and you get elected as a candidate, because when there is no more available CPU time on the node, the system may decide like, okay, I don't have enough CPU, I need to, to kill this, or I need to kill someone, uh, to kick out someone off the, the node. Uh, and if you don't have limits set, uh, you get kind of the first candidate to be kicked off the node. <laughs> um, 
So be mindful of that. Again, my recommendation is somewhere in between don't set limits and set limits once you know your workload. So start without limit, see how it behaves, and at some point, add them, but add a value that, and, and again, and track the throttling. Be mindful, have, a, have, like, have observability, and use it to, 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 to track that down, have dashboards, have adding maybe on throttling. Everything that is above zero is a concern. So if it's like one, two, three person, maybe there's nothing to do. Maybe you can tweak a little bit something uh, ensure that the GoMax proc or something like that is set. Uh, but everything that is, let's say, beyond 10% or, or more than that needs your attention. Need to, you need to change the values. So again, remove the limits, see exactly how it's behaving, set the request accordingly, and then put back the limit. Uh, so I have some slides for the request. It's technical, like how it's computed how the system divide the number of CPUs and, and uh, because there, there's three different kind of applications actually running, uh, which are the best effort, the guarantee and the burstable. Uh, so if you set nothing, it's best effort. So again, you're going to be the first candidate to be kicked out of the node if there's a constraint on the CPU or something. The guarantee is request equal limits. So you get what you requested, no more, no less. Um, and the other one, which is usually what we have, it's the burstable. And again, burstable, because it's a total quota, so the total number of time on the CPU minus two plus X, which depends on, I don't remember. Uh, so, so it's a complicated co computation. But that means the final equation here is you're going to get a share of CPU that is, again, guarantee. And that's this mechanism that makes it guarantee. So you're never, if you need it, you're going to get it up to what you requested. So if you're using one CPU, maybe you should request 1.2, 1.3, 1.5 maybe, depending on how burst your, your, your application may be. Um, so how does it relate to HPA? And, and that's the end of, of the presentation. So HPA by default, uh, so pod auto, uh, horizontal pod auto scaler, you use metrics. So, and you say, if this matrix goes beyond that, just scale the number of pods. And by default, it's using the CPU, but it's using the CPU requested. So the, the usage versus the number of CPU requested. And what we saw in the before graphs is that my application was using one CPU, okay? So if you base your HPA on that number, uh, you're going to see that the application is using one CPU and then you need to scale or not. But actually the application is not using one CPU. The application is constrained down, is throttled to use one CPU. The application is using three CPUs. So you're going to scale on something that is badly defined at the source. So be sure of understanding how exactly your application needs to work. Yeah, and, and maybe another solution is based your HPA on something else. Maybe the metrics, the, the, the CPU use versus the limit, uh, because maybe the limit is set too low. So in this case, you're going to scale way before, uh, well, you're going to scale when you need it and not when you're constrained and actually not performing enough. So that, that's one way of doing it. Uh, And uh, so I have on the slides, so the slides are going to be shared. Uh, there is some uh, Prometheus queries for graphing the throttling rate and mean. So the mean is, is cool to have, but the rate is, is more what's happening uh, at this time. So every time the rate of throttling is not zero, you have a problem. The, 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 the pod is being constrained down. Um, and so you can grab the pod's usage that is close to the limit. So if you're using very close to the limit, that means you should increase the limit. Um, and the CPU over commit in the cluster. So because usually we want to stack the cluster, the nodes as much as possible. So we, 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 we get what we paid for and we want to use everything. But um, so it, it's good to track down because maybe you're like, you think you're, you're getting back your money when you stack the field thing and use 100% of the CPU of the nodes. But sometimes you actually throttle your application so much that 
you could have half of the pods, half of the nodes, and have the same throughput at, in the end. So uh, be sure to, to check these kind of, of things. And then there's a lot of documentation, better explain, explanation of how all that is working uh, better than my talk, actually. So, and my talk is based on things I read on the internet and, and whatnot. So uh, there is a full list in here. Uh, join us in our um, meetup, CNCF and Kubernetes meetup in Canada if you're there. Even if you're not there, uh, we're very open when it's, uh, when it's online, when it's in person. You can still come to see us in Canada. Uh, <laughs> we love you all. <laughs>